For the next part of the Tetris game, I want to work on two major bits. Number one, once a piece hits the floor, I want to create a new piece, starting at the top. And then, while well, we add it, we can also add collisions between pieces. All of that should be fairly straightforward, let's jump right in. Once again, here I am back inside of the code editor and I want to work inside of game.py. First of all, we have to figure out when a piece is actually hitting the floor. At the moment, if I run main.py again, we have to wait for a second. We are reaching the floor, but all we're doing is we're keeping this piece at the bottom. We don't actually stop it from moving. For that, I want to work inside of Tetromino and let me minimize the methods. Inside of move down, we have a check if we are not exceeding the vertical limit. Meaning a block can only go one further down if we are inside of the limit. However, we can add to this an else statement. This would only trigger if a piece is exceeding all of the rows. And if that is the case, we want to run a function like self, let's call it create new no. This one doesn't exist right now. And the method has to exist inside of the game. Because in there, we are creating the tetrominoes. Let me minimize all of the methods and inside of the game, I want to create a create new tetromino method. No need for custom parameters and the only thing we want to do in there, at least for now, is to create a new tetromino. So self.tetromino is going to be a new instance of the tetromino class. For that, once again, we will need a shape and a group. So let me paste them in there. The group is the easy bit. We get that from the init method. These sprites we want to use for the group, like we have done for this tetromino. As a matter of fact, we could actually copy all of the arguments from this tetromino and paste it in there. However, now we have an issue. We want to call this create new tetromino as soon as the tetromino is hitting the floor, which is this else statement. Right now, create new tetromino inside of this method is part of the tetromino class but the actual method is inside of the game. To fix that, we are going to give the tetromino another argument that I'm going to call create new tetromino. And this we could add as an attribute. So create new tetromino is going to be create new tetromino. Then finally, we have to add this method to both of the instances. So self.create new tetromino both the Tremino classes. That should already have a reasonable impact. Although to test all of this, I want to increase the speed quite a bit so I don't have to wait too long. If I now run main.py again, we get a much faster speed. And if we hit the bottom, we are spawning a new piece that we can now move. And this is working really well. We keep on having more pieces. The one issue now is that there is well, there's an overlap between the different pieces. We have no collision whatsoever. So with that, let's work on the collision between the pieces. For that, we need some kind of data structure. Just to explain what's going to happen. And let me minimize everything so I can tell what's going on. Basically, once a tetromino hits the ground, we don't get rid of the blocks, meaning the sprites stick around. Because of that, we can see all of the blocks once a tetromino has reached the floor. All of that we want to store in a separate list. That way, if a tetromino is moving, we can check against that list to allow it to move or not. And that new list is going to be created inside of the game. And let's put it right below the tetromino, actually right above. I want to create self dot, let's call it field data. All we're going to create for this one is a list that contains other lists. And these inner lists contain zeros with one zero for every column of the field. I want to first of all create one row. This is going to be zero for x in range columns. This would be a single row inside of the game. And this I want to use again inside of list comprehension because I want to create a row for y in range rows. 
All of this would create a nested list with lots of entries. And to demonstrate what this is actually doing, let me create a for loop. So for row in self.field data, I want to print the row. We are basically printing every single row of this nested list. If I now run main.py, we can close it right away. And what we are getting is a list that looks like this. This nested list has the same amount of columns and rows as our actual game field, which means this makes it really easy to store the data. To explain how this is going to work, imagine we have a T shape. Then we are going to check where this thing is going to land. Let's say it could land roughly here. If that is the case, we are going to change the zero, so this zero, this zero, this zero, and this zero, to the actual block, which would be this block class. And for all of that, let me minimize the game class so we can tell what's going on. Now, basically what we want to do, once the tetromino is landing, once again, this is what we are doing down here. I want to add the individual blocks, the one down there, or rather the ones that we keep inside of self.blocks. I want to add them to the field. But for that, tetromino needs to have access to the field itself, which means I want to get rid of the for loop. And then when I'm creating the tetromino piece, I want to do all of this over multiple lines and then add one more argument which would be self.fielddata. And all of that I can copy because I want to do the same thing for the other tetromino. So let me paste it in there. And that makes the entire thing much easier to read. Cool. With that, I can minimize the game class. And now a tetromino is going to need one more parameter for the field data. This needs to be an attribute right away, self.fielddata is going to be field data. And now that we have all of that, I can look at this move down statement. Before we are creating a new tetromino, I want to look at all of the blocks, which means for block in self dot blocks. From that information, I want to update the field. So self dot field data. And now we need indexing twice. One is going to be for the rows, or this could also be Y and then for the column or X. To get started with the row or Y, we want to create an integer. Then we want to look at the block, the position, and then Y. Int here is incredibly important because by default, a vector has floating point numbers. So this Y would be 1.0. But for indexing, you need an integer. So this int is quite important. Next up then for the column, I want to have an integer with block.pos.x. With that, we can get the right entry inside of the field data. And for now, let me simply change this value to a 1. And then after we are doing all of this and create a new tetromino, I want to once again print the entirety of the field, which means for row in self.field data, I want to print the row. Let's see what this is going to do. If I now run main.py again, we get one piece and now let me close it. There you can see in the bottom right, we get the T shape and you can tell this is the right shape. Meaning all of that is working really well. That being said, the value I actually want to store isn't going to be a one, it is going to be the block itself meaning an instance of the class itself is going to be one entry of this field data, which is perfectly fine to do, but it does make debugging a bit more difficult. To illustrate, let me run the game again. And now if we get one piece and it reaches the floor, I can look at the list and you can see we have one block, but well, it doesn't look as pretty anymore, although it is still working. I guess for our purposes, we don't need the print statement in the for loop anymore because we know all of this is going to work. Which means next up, we can work on the collision. For that, if I minimize everything again, I want to work inside of the blocks because in there, we already have a horizontal collide and a vertical collide. Those two methods we can expand. Let's start with horizontal. 
In there, first of all, we need to have access to all of the other blocks that we have already placed. This we are storing in the field data. And then inside of the Tetromino class, when I look at next move horizontal collide and I call these blocks, I have to add one more argument, which is going to be self.field data. With that, I can keep on working. And all I have to do is add a second if statement. I want to check if the field data, that I want to check the row and then the column. If that value exists, then I know there is going to be a collision, which means I want to return true. So all we have to figure out is the row and the column. And that is actually quite easy. For the row, we once again want to get an integer. And since we are only moving in the vertical axis, I simply want to check self.post.y. For the column, I already have the position. This is going to be x. This is telling me where the field is going to be in the next turn on the horizontal axis. So this is what I have to paste in there. Let's try all of this. And I hope I'm getting a long piece or an eye shape that looks really good. So next up, this piece should not be able to move to the right once we reach this bit, and we can't. And then this L shape shouldn't be able to move to the left. And this was also not working right like this. And yeah, this is working, but it's really hard to see. If you follow along, just try it on your own. It is going to work. Next up then, we can work on the vertical collide. This one will be your exercise. I want you guys to implement the vertical collisions between the pieces. Should be fairly straightforward and really similar compared to what we have done for the horizontal collisions. Pause the video now and try this one yourself. All right, back inside of the code editor. I want to work inside of vertical collide. In there, I want to get access to the field data. And next up, I have to figure out a second if statement. For this one, once again, I want to check if there is a field data, then we need the row and then we need the column. If there is a piece in this position, then we want to return true. So we have to figure out the row and the column. The row for this one, we are getting via the arguments, so why? This is what we got earlier. For the column, we want to get an integer of self.pos.x. That's pretty much all we need, although later on, we are going to make some minor refinements. First of all, though, inside of Tetromino, I want to look at next move vertical collide. Because in there, when we are calling the vertical collide method, we have to add self.field data. And for now, this should be all we need. If I now run the game again, we get one piece, and then we get another piece, and there we have an issue. That, well, we get some really strange behavior. This is caused because inside of the vertical collide, this if statement is triggering when we are on the negative position. Because of that, we get lots of collisions above the field. But that we can fix quite easily. We first of all want to check if y is greater or equal than zero, and then end field data. If we're not trying this again, I get pieces once more. And then the next piece comes down perfectly fine and it lands on top of the other piece. We can do this a couple more times and now I can also check the horizontal collisions and this is working really good. So let's try it on this side and I'm also happy with that. Cool, with that we have another super important bit. And the game is very much coming together.